Hi, um, this is episode 355 of the official podcast. No episodes missing, you didn't miss out on anything, don't worry about it. If you hear anything like that, that's a rumor and a lie, misinformation, false yeah, news. spread by the deep state. Spread by the deep state, spread by unity probably, the source of all evil for the past two weeks on the internet. So Jackson, you had some updates, I think, about the death threats. Did you want to update everyone? Oh yeah, I wanted to gloat about that. Didn't I say last week that the call came from inside the house? Like I could personally I think guarantee- we all did. Yeah. Brother, wait, we, <laughs> we, we all agree. Confirmation on that last week too. We talked Did about we? that. Yeah, we talked about that. No, 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 not no, the no, confirmation. No, no. We we no. talked about that there was a death threat, and that was breaking yeah. news like an hour old at the time. But I don't think we yeah. had confirmation that it really was from inside the house. It was the following day where it was announced that uh, an employee from within Unity, unnamed employee, was the one that sent in the death threats originally. And that's that's what caused the whole kerfuffle. I so it wasn't we'd covered them. No, because don't you remember we explicitly blamed gamers like everyone would. <laughs> we, we blamed the gamers. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So sorry, so is gamers. This confirmed. <laughs> yeah, I mean the police yeah. came out and confirmed it. They said, "Yeah, it came from within Unity." <laughs> I mean, it makes sense because why would gamers send it? I mean, trolls would just for fun, for the sake of threatening death but not actually yeah. anybody who cares cares yeah right? like i said like i said last week like the, it, people who send in death threats are usually not people that care that passionately about the yeah. situation going on they just want to send in death threats that's like that's their pastime that's their hobby yeah i mean there are obviously the more deranged ones yeah i'm, I'm surprised they didn't get swatted on top of it and everything yeah but it was interesting that we talked about that on the episode and we made the joke or uh, prediction that it was an employee that did it. I think I, I said it was the CEO that did it. I, I, I like that little fan theory that it was the CEO that called in the um, the death threat. It goes all the way up to the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just to divert attention and like kind of put them in the good graces of the people, look at, like, victimize themselves, basically? It's a, uh, it's a spectrum of diffusion. You either go the looking good and feeling good route, such as Blizzard, with, oh, we, we can't be controversial. We like gay people, and we support Pride Month. What do, <laughs> what do you mean, sweatshop workers and anti-Hong Kong-Tibet policies? No, 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 no. Or you go the other route, where it's, uh, no, we're the victims. Oh, everything's happening to us. We got death threats. Oh, we got a bomb threat at our office. No, we, it's, we can't it's have not done one wrong. Or the other. It's not one or the other. Most companies do both. True. Or, uh, Very true. Yeah. They swap between them. I, lo- I like so how- So do YouTubers, uh, so do game developers, so does everybody on the internet now. Whenever they start yeah, getting yeah. shit, it's, oh, I'm getting death threats in my DMs. Can we see them? No. <laughs> Don't ask, bigot. <laughs> if you started getting that level of attention- Like, in terms of hate, direct hate to you guys, um, like Unity did, what would be, what would be your form of deflection? How would you navigate the situation? How would you try to Hmm. win over the masses? I don't think there's a whole lot you could do. Maybe like an interpretive dance. Yeah, that, that does seem to be the way most people go. I got it. Free money. I I would just give bags of cash out to fans. That's a really good idea. Yeah, everyone yeah, yeah, likes yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Expensive, fast. Mm-hmm. But people would like me because people like money. Yeah, no, that's actually a really good idea. Yeah. You could just buy their support. Yeah, and then in January when the policy comes around, I'll make all that money back. It's an investment. They have to, if they get the money, if they get the $5 or whatever you're giving away to each <laughs> of them. Oh, you'd have to give them more than $5. I don't, I don't know. I just think I think people would be like, get them a whole subway foot long back in 2004. They'll love it. <laughs> I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, it's a free five dollars, and I just don't have to like comment on this guy anymore. I'd do that. That's just free five bucks. Well, I would pay the YouTubers and whatnot, not the actual people commenting. You want to influence oh. public opinion, like hire a PR agency. This isn't anything new. If you pay individual people on the internet, that's gonna be expensive. But surely, I don't think there's been like a big celebrity that's like sidestepped this kind of, you know, uh, disaster at all. Like every single one has fallen. Like if Ashton Kutcher and uh, Mila Kunis couldn't sidestep what happened with them with all their resources and PR managers and stuff like that, I don't think it's possible for anyone. 
They didn't really try, to be fair. I mean, the, so they what did. happens with them again? Did we talk about this? They sent the the le- the character witness letters for their friend Danny Masterson, who has just been found guilty on two out of three charges of rape. Yeah. Which is surprising, because didn't Ashton Kutcher, wasn't he like a spokesperson or something? Like an activist yeah. f- against human trafficking? He was a Reddit certified good guy. Yeah, he's, he still is. So why would he come out and like write this nice letter about a rapist? <laughs> that's that's the whole thing, yeah. <laughs> why would he do that? <laughs> this is such a heel turn, but why? I assume they've been friends for over 20 years and he was in denial, maybe. Well, he wasn't in denial. No, he outright said, like, we did this knowing, like, uh, like not trying to downplay the victims or anything. We we did this just to give but. our experience with Danny Masterson. <laughs> so but here's to, a letter uh, downplaying his experience and, and saying that he's a good person. Yeah, well, yeah. also to, to jump on all that, as of two days ago, Ashton Kutcher has resigned from the anti-child sex organization. After he's, all choosing that Danny, he's choosing confirmed rapist Danny Masterson over his <laughs> organization <laughs> that he's built up. It's a tough choice, I know. <laughs> that is crazy. He said, I cannot allow my error in judgment to distract from our efforts and the children we serve, which is PR talk for I look really bad. I need to get out of here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in the spotlight Uh, anymore for a bit. Don't pay attention to me. He's that was like a massive 180 because public perception of Ashton Kutcher over the last few years, especially on the Internet, due to his position in that organization has been like extremely positive. Like, you go into, like, threads on Reddit or whatever where people are talking about which celebrities they love or which celebrities they think are genuinely good people and would be surprised if they did something terrible. It was, like, always Ashton Kutcher. Which is yeah. also kind of weird because uh, I watched, after all this, a ton of, like, less than savory interviews of his came out where he was talking about how Danny Masterson, or I think it was Danny Masterson, Bet him twenty dollars that he wouldn't French kiss French kiss Mila Kunis when she was fourteen and he was nineteen, and he did. Well, that's his wife now, so you look stupid, don't you? <laughs> yeah, she was do, still. Do a you child, not believe though. in true love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking idiot. Have you never seen a coming of age movie? <laughs> it, it was her uh, debutante ball. Yeah, it was cool. It was fine. Wait, you, she was actually Watch fourteen Twilight. on the show. Yeah, what, what? yeah, she started the show when she was like fourteen, and then wasn't her entire role to be that dude's boyfriend, girlfriend? I don't know if that was her whole role in the beginning, but I mean, yeah, eventually. Well, sure even was. even if that's the case, like, that's he's acting. Annoying girlfriend. That's acting, Jackson. You know, they're yeah, but usually if you if you're like gonna, you still use someone that's of legal of age, age to be younger. Yeah, True. Yeah. <laughs> Fourteen to kiss a twenty-year-old and make out with him and whatever on camera well, seems a bit weird. Overcorrected with shows like Riverdale hiring like borderline forty year olds to you know play high school kids. Yeah, so. but that doesn't matter. That doesn't. That's been I don't want to watch since the eighties where they hire like forty year old actors to play high schoolers. Can you imagine how much less enjoyable Riverdale would be if I had to sit down and watch like thirteen year old, fourteen year old? It was kids not a critique, that? Jackson. I, I yeah, very yeah, much yeah. enjoy. I very much enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, you got Jackson up in arms there for a second. You had him on fight mode. <laughs> yeah. I, I no, haven't I like seen it. Riverdale. But yeah, Jackson, to your point, it, it's, it almost proves just how out of touch these people are. Because just like you said, all I really knew about Ashton Kutcher is that he was on some annoying punk show or prank show punk. at some oh, point. Yeah, I about then, that one, yeah. And then he was on the 70s show and then he did activism against sex trafficking or something. That's Which is good. all I ever heard about him, ever. And then in one fell swoop, in a single day, he just undoes it all. And now all I know about him is, oh, he's the guy that defended that Scientologist rapist, right? That's yeah. it now. And now all of those same comment threads, now all of those same comment threads where I would go on and read about how Ashton Kutcher is the greatest, how no one could foresee anything going wrong with him. Now all the comments about him are like, oh, I knew this was coming. I knew he was a bad guy. (laughs) I have a feeling some people did know that because of those interviews, like with the Mila Kunis make out bets and all of that shit when she was a child. Yeah, that's fair. Potentially they did. Potentially they did, but it's just yeah. interesting to me the in, insane, well not insane, but the sudden reversal, 180 degree uh, swap between those two, you know, mindsets, public, like in terms of public opinion. It's just crazy. Yeah. Massive, massive shift. And like I, like I said with my original point, if he can't sidestep it, does he have ties with Scientology or is it just Danny Masterson? I think it was rapist? just Danny. 
Okay. I'm not sure. Regardless, like he's he's obviously a multi-millionaire, very successful person, very powerful person. Um, if he can't sidestep it, if he doesn't have the PR resources that are able to navigate this situation and make him come out squeaky clean on the other end, I don't think YouTubers are able to, and I don't think uh, other people are going to be able to either. Maybe like, yeah, maybe the the less famous you are or the less public you are, the easier you will have in terms of coming out the other end looking better. But if you've got any, I, kind I just of- don't think they care enough. Like, why would what's his face, Unity CEO? He's not gonna have to sit down and actually pay any agencies to launder his image on social media. Well, don't, don't they have like eight thousand employees? Surely there's like a PR department in their company that this is their entire job. Uh, apparently not, because I think all they have is some poor social media intern who's been just trying to put out fires, kind of haphazardly and half-heartedly on X, Twitter. Going, yeah, we heard you. Uh, about we're about to make another announcement, you guys. One day, one of these days, and they haven't so far, as far as I'm aware. They they made a post last night saying we heard you and we're listening again. Yeah, but they just announced that they were going to keep us posted, and then they didn't. Right? Yeah, it's it's the old gamer PR bullshit. It's the same stuff that happens with Blizzard and all those companies. Something bad happens, everyone hates them for a week, and then they go, you know, I really just want to play Diablo Four, and it doesn't matter. None of it mattered. Well, that's with gamers. I think this is different because it's like a it's a it's a game engine. I don't think there's that kind right. of. I don't think anything will come of this. For the developers, it will be a different story, but the gamers are not going to care. They're just going to move on. Well, why would the gamers care? That It doesn't affect them at all. Yeah, it does. Wait, what are you talking about? This affects, this affects every gamer for sure. 100%, yeah. How? The gamer doesn't care if you make your game in Unreal or Unity. Well, yeah, but the games that are being made in Unity that they currently like to play are going to go through big shifts. Like a lot of developers yeah. are threatening to completely stop like a cult of lamb yeah, threatening to be off of the current stores they're on because of it. And Slay the Spire is delaying their sequel. My point is it's not going to have that big of a down like stream effect on people if Unity goes belly up tomorrow. It's going to be disruptive for a little bit until all these developers move on to something else. My point is they can move on and they will, well, yeah. hopefully. The developers are just going to leave the industry entirely and never make a game again. I have to say, I feel bad for the developers because they all seem so desperate for Unity to fix their shit, but I guess the trust is just too broken. Uh, Godot, Godot, Godot. I don't, I still don't know how to pronounce that engine's name, by the way. Go Godot. 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 See, you guys uh, can't even agree. Every YouTuber calls it Godot. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Godot. No, because if you look at the conference speeches given by the guy who created it, he calls it Godot. But I don't know if that's because. But that he doesn't mean Spanish anything. He, he, he has no connection. It's in the <laughs> hands of the gamers now. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> we make the definition. We make the pronunciation. Anyway, Godot monthly Godot. fund went from. Okay, it went from twenty five thousand euros <laughs> roughly to almost forty five thousand over the span of the last week. So since September twelfth, it almost doubled the amount of money that they make a month. Just through sheer, like, Unity's incompetence, I guess, or carelessness. And the really funny part is that they announced their monthly fund literally two hours before Unity announced that they were going to schlong every developer. So it was <laughs> perfect timing. Um, Unreal Engine does what Unreal Engine does. It just looks perfect and is inviting everyone. Obviously, Tim Sweeney is gloat tweeting about this whole drama. <laughs> and But what, what people have noticed, though, is... um that there was news that Unity apparently, so as you guys know, Unity's engine doesn't actually make any money itself. It's all the surrounding services, like the advertising service that makes them any money. And they still have, like the company as a whole, still hemorrhages money to the tune of like billions of dollars a year. And they announced, hey, look, our new revenue scheme is convoluted and stupid, but if you use, if you switch your mobile games to our advertising platform, which is called Level Play. Level Play, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You may not have to pay any of this revenue share. We can go down as far down as a zero cents Ooh. per installation. So people now suspect, oh, this was just a power play to basically force all of these developers to move from all the other uh, advertising providers to 
just Unity's advertising product. Which is Iron yeah. Source. This is it all ties back to Iron Source, the company they merged with. Yeah. It does, yeah. What mm. losers? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, I guess. It is a strong play, I suppose, but I, did they really not see that developers would be pissed off about this? Especially the again, the biggest part is retroactively changing the terms of service. If the if the main factor of all of this is greed, it's them saying, hey, we want money, we're missing out on a big chunk of change, then the lack of foresight here is fucking cataclysmic. They they had to have taken a breath and said, wow, every single person on the planet's going to hate this. Because what else could yeah. they be doing it for except money? You know, I don't think they went in blind. I think this was a calculated risk. The, the reaction might have been more than they anticipated but i don't think they expected like a positive reaction to this yes yeah. this, yeah, this, no this definitely would have been because a apparently reaction. also so many uh one some of the biggest unity developers uh, including the asset store developers they've said we were part of an insider program where you know they asked us our opinion and we all said this is insane <laughs> and a lot of employees prob- apparently said the same thing and they went ahead with it anyway so and the sad thing is all of the developers are pretty much unanimously saying the same thing too, which is, look, we understand that you guys are bleeding money. We wouldn't have had a problem if you just announced a revenue share. Just yeah, like, just uh, a normal Unreal revenue or share. Or even this, even this per installation nonsense, but if you didn't make it retroactively uh, forcible and forcible, yeah. that's like the part that's the most egregious about this. It's the retroactive pricing that everyone mostly got up in arms about. Like if they said, hey, January 1st, we're changing the policy, then you give them time to shift over and change things and whatever. And, you know, if you want to move to a new engine, you can. But if they're going to go, hey, I don't give a fuck what you made our game. You know, you made our game in Unity. You're going to get priced. That's stupid. That's bullshit and stupid. I would still prefer just a standard revenue share mo- model instead of uh, yeah. per download. Make, make the math easy. What's with this installation shit? How are you gonna keep track of this nonsense? It's, it's well. Really also, dumb. I don't trust. I don't trust Unity to do a good job at tracking this kind of stuff either. I don't trust them not to fudge the numbers so that they make more money. There's that too. Yeah. Is the tracking algorithm open source? Probably not. No, right? of course no. not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no <laughs> shot. <laughs> Which means no one should trust this. It's locked up in a safe in John's office. If they put the code out for it for people to look through, then it's like, fine, I get it, whatever. But if they're not, then no one on the planet should trust this for even a second. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, which is probably why they're going to have a bunch of Iron Sources malware tracking nonsense in every mobile game now. And cool. I don't know what they're going to do for desktop. They're just, I guess, going to shrug and go, oh, you guys make video games on desktop still? I don't know if that's their official solution or what. It's going to go really great in my collection next to like my 10 cent malware and my five different game <laughs> launchers and all those programs. I know. That's the way of gaming I now. Know. I really like the thing that surprises me the most about the video games industry is that people are even still making games, video games. Because, yeah, it's like an incredibly, it is, it is a seriously incredibly profitable, uh, you know, industry. But like most of the money comes from mobile games. Aren't you making like, a video oh, game right yeah. now as we speak? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like most most money comes from mobile games. I don't understand how all of these studios haven't fully converted into just mobile game studios, basically. Yeah, I, I'm also kind of surprised there's not more studios just going the route of pumping out easy mobile games. Yeah, if their entire yeah. intention of a business is to make money, then we'll... It doesn't make well, sense to me why be... they're even making these AAA games, pouring these infinite budgets into them and maybe not making as much back or, you know, the the, the risk there uh, when they could just be shitting out mobile games and making bank. Yeah, that works for business. But for indie devs, it's often about oh, yeah. a vision and something they want to make. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just talking about the AAAs. Plus the some oh, AAA yeah. games yeah. still, like desktop games still make a lot of money, like GTA you know, the next yeah, one's just, probably yeah. going to make infinite money again. You I look just at think Fortnite. that there's more risk. There's more risk involved in, in those. So uh, I was reading games. I was reading a thing from some game. De- I don't remember who it was, but he was like a long time in the industry. And he talked about how um, there was a series of years. I think it was like 97 to 2003 or something where they released a new Final Fantasy nearly every year. 
And everyone's yeah. like, oh my god, how do you release a whole Final Fantasy every single year or something like that? And they're all good. <laughs> they're all like the good ones that people remember. And it's because the order of magnitude of making a game now compared to back then is so, so, so much higher. There's mm -hmm. so much more work, so much more development, so many more moving yeah. parts, so much more fidelity, so much more render time, so much more this and that that goes into a AAA game. Just the team complexity. Then. Yeah, just team, team complexity, complexity overhead, all these pieces. And the question becomes, when is it going to be completely unsustainable? The games industry is making record profits and a shitload of money, but how long until it's like, hey... The sequel to this game is going to take 12 years to make, and then We're no one gives there. a shit anymore. We're already you know? there. The new, the new uh, Bethesda has just come out, basically, and said that they've just started uh, pre-production or just started production on the next Elder Scrolls game. Yeah. You know, the game they announced seven years ago. Yeah. They've just started yeah. production on it, and we shouldn't expect it until, like, 2029. Because everything has to... It is more, well, maybe difficult might be the wrong word, but yes, everything just has more fidelity now. Like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you had, what, seven and a half polygons for a yeah. character in a fighting game. Yeah. Now you use photogrammetry to scan a billion polygons of a single and, rock. And here's you where you, could, you, could have, you could have one 2D artist basically make the entire graphical suite for your video game. And now right. you need like... Yeah, just chains of teams basically in order to <laughs> they used to just literally they used to dress up in Party City costumes for Mortal Kombat take photos of yeah. themselves and yeah, just digital cut actors. themselves yeah. out they were, they were really cool too, <laughs> they though. were kick ass they yeah. were yeah. really cool yeah that was very clever but it was also not as difficult as did you ever play now. the Area 51 arcade cabinet that did of the course. same thing absolutely god yeah. that one was great but the other big problem with that is then it becomes less and less feasible to meet a schedule or meet demands. So internally, uh, let's use Cyberpunk as a great example. How many mm -hmm. times did they announce that the game was delayed? Probably, I think, four times publicly. How many times yeah. do you think internally they announced it? Probably 20 or 30 times they were like, guys, we're, we're not going to make this. We have to... You know, before announcing a real launch date, they were probably like, okay, we want to aim for November. Yeah. Uh, no, no, now we have to hit January. You know what? Next year. And then finally, the publisher was like, hey, we need a fucking release date. And they went, uh, we'll do it this day. And then you have more they and more the of those delays, you know? So as the scope of these projects gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's just impossible to actually live up to demand or the vision of it. It's also when you're at that scale, when your organization is at that scale and your game is at that complexity, you have layers and layers and layers of dependencies that once broken, uh, just create, you know, wake debt, like just completely fuck up everything behind it. So as soon as one thing in that chain failed in development, you you, you can push back the timeline by like a year because yeah. there's no way you're getting back on track at that point. If we reflect on the really large games that came out recently that were very successful, it's because they're built on existing pieces. Elden Ring took, uh, I think, eight years, seven years since the previous game by that team, and it's using the same engine, and they just crafted a whole new world with it. Resident Evil 4, the remake, was a remake, so they already knew every level, every set design, every part of the story. They knew what to make and just change the gameplay. Tears of the Kingdom is built on the Breath of the Wild engine, and it's the same map with just a bunch of additions to it and new mechanics. Meanwhile, everything that's original, for the most part, is a broken failure because they don't have time. They don't have the time or the resources to do it with how big everything's getting. What was the last original game that released in a good state and also sold? It's a great question. Well? Lies of P right now, I'll tell you, partner. But isn't that indie? No, it's not indie. What no, the fuck? it's not it's indie. Triple A. Uh -uh. But it does kind of have, it does kind of like pretty, pretty directly borrow the framework from Souls games, right? Yeah, it's but still I guess an original it is, game though. Yeah, it is, a, it is an original game by an original dev, so they don't have they had to build that framework up as well, I assume. So yeah, yeah, and we don't know how long they were working on it behind the scenes. Yeah, I think yeah, I I think I spoke about this a uh, couple of weeks ago, but it it still blows my mind that the entire Mass Effect trilogy was made in, within the span of five years, and now video games that that's like oh, an yeah, entire dev cycle today anymore. Like yeah, Mass no Effect way. Three, 
Mass Effect 3, for all the shit it got, was made in two years under the pump. Like, that's just fucking incredible to me that they were yep. able to get that game out and not have it just a... I mean, the ending is obviously not great, as we all know, but, like, the the rest of the game is incredible. Like, they, they really nailed most of the game. And to do that within two years is just, like, I, I don't know how... I don't know how you replicate that currently. You can't. You can't, yeah. I think the only real answer to that question is Baldur's Gate 3. But number one, it's working off an established franchise. So again, all, a lot of the lore and the fan base is already there. And two, they spent how fucking long in early access? Just iterating on it and slowly iterating building it up over time until launch. It's also not a brand new engine. Yeah, that too. It's The engine all- is a new, no, there is the IP. Yeah, all the Bad all the example. truly huge games for the most part are not entirely new things because they have to reuse pieces and assets, you know. There's also nothing wrong with that as well. It's kind of like the trade you make for these ever-growing games. Like I I see so much Oh man, have you guys noticed that there's an uptick in like console wars online at the moment? I feel like we've gone back to like 2008, 2010 with how much like conversation there is online about most well, because everything's is just a Xbox. debate now so yeah it, yeah but uh, yeah it, it does feel like we've gone back to 2010 in that regard in terms of the console wars debate it's kind of nostalgic but also which is crazy that it's even a debate because xbox has nothing yeah true very true <laughs> legitimately no, though they, they have nothing <laughs> So to be fair, PS5 really isn't doing that much better this generation. Like you look no, at the PS4 generation and the amount of like games and exclusives that came out during that. Uh, we're like, what, three, four years into the PS5 cycle now and I don't feel like there's been nearly as many big games. There hasn't. No, there there, there, has, really been, there has been more than Xbox for sure, but there hasn't been that as many as PS4. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the console wars online. Like people... Like with the Spider-Man trailer that just released, the Spider-Man 2 that's releasing on PS5, people are like pinpointing reused assets, the ones that they uh, reused from the first game, and being like, oh, look at this, Xbox games would never do this. This is like so <laughs> yeah, lazy. Sure. They're so lazy. It's like, no, that's just, why would you re like make the fucking walk cycle for Spider-Man when you've already got it? That's, that saves you to make other new stuff, you know? Nintendo's gonna win again, baby, because the Nintendo Switch 2 is apparently being shown off behind closed doors. About fucking time. Sounds like baloney if you ask me. Well, I hope it's not, because nice. God, do we need a Switch 2 so bad? It's, it's Nintendo. Surely it'll have, like, somehow it'll have worse specs than the Switch 1. <laughs> like, they've regressed to a, More motion a controls. 1990s chipset. Yeah. It'll I mean, probably be out of date already, yeah. Uh, and then that's going to be the their console for the next 15 years. Have you guys yep. seen Mortal Kombat 1 on the Switch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it really good. embarrassing. It is so... It's not just embarrassing. It's so shameless. I understand, I guess, if you want to force your AAA game that you have made in an engine like Unreal Engine 5 onto a platform like the Switch, but to charge full 70 bucks for it is so shameless. Yeah. For the way it looks. But wait, does it have, does it have full gameplay? Does yeah, it, it actually full- runs completely fine. It just looks old because yeah. it's on the Switch. There, there's got to be a compromise. You know, if the game works and it runs, in, on one hand, be thankful that a game of that high caliber is actually coming to the Switch. They actually got it to run on the Switch. On the other hand, I don't know, make it like 40 bucks. Just be like, hey, yeah, it looks like shit. Yeah, at least Might make it stutter. like half off. Yeah, give it give it a discount because it's clearly not the superior the version. The optimal way. Yeah. yeah. It, isn't there a functionality on the Switch to just, like, cloud stream games? Like, isn't that what some uh, games do to release on Switch? Like, they just stream the game to I'm not to sure. Hardware? I don't think I've heard of that. I've never heard of they could have just that. done that and, like... I don't think Nintendo knows what the cloud is, brother. No, it's... So it's stream from where? I, it's more from the video. I'm pretty sure Doom... Uh, does Doom Eternal exist on Switch? Yes. It does, Doom, and I the, think the it's just a really, does. really good port. Okay. It is well, not I swear. streamed at all, though. It's just, it has worse graphics on the Switch. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I swear, I swear there was talk about video games that stream to the Switch. Well, but all that shit's dead. Stadia's dead, and all that other stuff is yeah. dead. I think that fad died. <laughs> they gave up on God. that real quick. Yeah. There you go. Kingdom Kingdom Hearts is on the Switch only for cloud streaming. All right. You know, well, yeah. you know what will never die, though? What? Mm. 
Tell watching me. your favorite spooky movie on Netflix. Mm. Ooh, maybe yeah. maybe Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Hereditary. Hereditary? Is that it? Yeah, Hereditary. hereditary. Yeah, mm-hmm. hereditary. <laughs> I, I, always, I always mix it up between the two. Mix it up with what? The wrong pronunciation? <laughs> yeah, the wrong word entirely. <laughs> yeah, A word yeah. that doesn't exist. Heredity <clears throat> exists. What? Is it? It's a heredity. is not a real word. It, yes, you're it just is. saying hereditary the wrong way. Heredity. I just Googled it. The passing on of physical or mental characteristics. Heredity. Oh, it is. No, that. What? Yes, that it's is, a word. It is a word. It's just hereditary again. <laughs> that's, no, that's just the word. Heredity is a noun. Yeah, is heredity a is an adjective. Huh. Yes. They're from the same that root. Word. I've but never two heard that words. either. Hey. Hey, we're learning something. Thank you. Yeah. We are. Can we learn about Express VPN instead? Yes. Please <laughs> teach us. Anyway, when you want to watch already. your favorite movie, such as Hereditary or the made up movie Heredity, well, <laughs> you might hop on Netflix and go, hey, Where's my movie? It's go- it's not here. What the what? Huh? I pay a whole subscription for this? Well, don't fret, don't scream, don't yell. If you're going to be scared by the lack of options on your streaming services this Halloween season, well, ExpressVPN is going to have you covered. They're going to let you change your location to be watching Netflix or any other streaming, really. You know, Hulu doesn't get as much love as it deserves to let you watch any content you want from around the world, thanks to stupid copyright and licensing problems. You can save 50 bucks a month by getting all the entertainment you want in one place by just swapping your location with ExpressVPN. So they go went ahead and give me three good examples here of uh, stuff that is available only in specific regions, and coincidentally, two of the three are very relevant to our own hosts. Uh, I'll go ahead and get one out of the way. Parasite is available on Korean Netflix. That's fine. But Jackson, you can watch all of Lord of the Rings on (gasps) Australian Netflix. Wait, really? Yes. And Kaya can watch the original Top Gun movie on German Netflix. Whoa, that's cool. But now with ExpressVPN, all of us can watch all of those things and it will work on your phone your laptop your tablet your tv everything you could possibly imagine it's also as i mentioned going to work with pretty much any streaming service you can think of and if you want to get your money's worth and get an extra three months of expressvpn for free you can go to expressvpn.com slash official that's e-x-p-r-e-s-s vpn.com slash official expressvpn.com slash official And now that you've changed your location so you can look up the definition of words that don't exist, well, it's going to be time for you to go on your phone. Because, you know, you got ExpressVPN, where else are you going to watch streaming stuff? On a computer? On a desktop? No one does that anymore. It's 2023. But if you're stuck in the Sahara Desert, or perhaps trapped at the bottom of the ocean, maybe in a foreign mountainous country where you don't even speak the language, you're going to need a premium wireless service to get you that data to watch all that incredible programming on the internet. And that's why Mint Mobile, as the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, is going to have you covered. Plans to talk will start at just $15 a month, And they cut out all the middleman to give you this incredible deal. They're going to eliminate traditional costs of retail, all these like unknown employee costs, all this physical store overhead, all this stuff that really doesn't translate to you having a good phone plan. It's gone. It does not exist with Mint Mobile because you don't need it. All you need is their plans that all come with unlimited talk, text, high-speed data delivered over the nation's largest 5G network. You can also use your own phone number, keep your own contacts. Everything that you need is going to be there for you. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get it shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash official. That's mintmobile.com slash official. Cut your wireless bill down to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash official. So you've had a long day, right? You've swapped all your internet service around. You've watched all the content on every single streaming service ever made. And that was in every country around the world because you were traveling via Mint Mobile's service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You need a good night's sleep. 
You need to relax. You need to come home, wash off all that disgusting data overload you got on yourself from just binging for weeks and weeks and weeks. Well, perhaps you should use a Helix mattress. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, the newly released Helix Elite Collection, mattresses designed for big and tall sleepers, you better believe that's me, and even a mattress made just for kids. Well, you might be in bed right now thanks to your incredible crippling depression and saying, well, how am I supposed to know what mattress is going to change my life and put a smile on my face? Well, that's why you take the Helix Sleep Quiz, which will tell you your perfect mattress to find in just under two minutes. And there's also no better way to, to, to figure out the perfect mattress than to try it, which is why they offer a 100-night trial and attend a 15-year warranty. So if that thing is in your house for over a decade, and you're going, eh, you know what, uh, eh, eh. For some reason, I don't know why anyone would ever want to return a Helix mattress, they will let you figure out through their warranty how to potentially keep you covered and happy. Memory foam layers, more responsive foam than the leading competitor. They make sure to give you good spine support. There's all sorts of great things to love with a Helix mattress. Helix is also offering 20% off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash official. It's their best offer yet, and it will not last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Helix.com, he, sorry, helixsleep.com slash official, 20% off and two free pillows. Thank you to the sponsors for supporting the show. Um, mm -hmm. So... Let's talk about One Piece. Yo, -ho. Guys, I why? I'm the only one that watches it. Well, no, you, well, you're hang, the one that watches it. Hang anime. on, I watched one episode of the live action One Piece. So take that. Yeah, and I watched I've half seen of them all. Half of it. <gasps> no, you finished have the you? entire season. Ooh, yeah. See. Charlie's elitism. He's fucking anime watching elitism. is yeah. being held over us. Weeb right now. Charlie strikes again. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't. Ca I didn't take you guys for actual <laughs> culture, gentlemen. Well, we're not. We watched the live action. Shouldn't you be looking down on us? The mix no, of more culture. No, it's fine. From what yeah. I've heard, I've got a few friends who love One Piece, and they all watched it and said, "Yeah, it's actually good. It's fine." Yeah, no, it is actually good. Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it. How does it hold up to the anime? Uh, well, it's very different. Like a lot of it's like same beats but it's all very different in its presentation and there's, there's also a lot of different story moments too so allegedly the reason the show is actually pretty solid and working is they have to run every episode by the original creator before they're allowed to finalize yep. it oda yep so that's a I that's a good way to do it not in my even opinion. i have a hot take i think the one piece community just has a better sense of humor and they don't take themselves very seriously because this to me didn't feel much different than the Cowboy Bebop adaptation. That was Whoa. Live action. <laughs> it was whatever. I liked that one too, but everybody got butthurt because their <laughs> fucking fedora tipping never ended and how dare you do this to Cowboy Bebop or whatever. Where's no, I'd never even watched Cowboy Bebop and it was fucking terrible. That was just a bad show. Wait, how could you know it's terrible if you've never watched it? The show was bad, Jackson. What do you mean? Yeah. But you never watched it. What I watched? What, what are you talking about? I watched well, the well, no, live no, no, action. No, 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 no. The difference oh, is Cowboy I, oh. Bebop is a dramatic space opera with intense world building, whereas One Piece is literally made for like 11-year-old kids. See, this is what I mean. That sort of talk is exactly... Like, One Piece, the fans just watched this live action adaptation. They were like, this is silly. But so is the original, so I like it. Yeah. Which is, in my opinion, fair. And the original Cowboy Bebop is comical at times, but it's not very silly. It's very serious. Mm. Tips Fedora. Yes, very interesting. Have you watched anyway, it? Both were fun. I've seen the live action adaptation. I okay, it. you never watched the original, so you don't know what you're talking about. See, this is what I mean. Just have, a, have some levity about your fucking favorite show. It, it doesn't matter. The live action can be still fun on its own. It it's really wasn't like, fun, but though. It was just a bad show. It was show. a bad show. Okay, I, I found it okay. It was an, <laughs> that's fine it was an okay pastime it's not the it's best so, thing ever but whatever it's, it's so, so weird to hear kaya kaya defend a show like a netflix well show. you know what it is it's kaya doesn't care that much about the property if they did this with mad max yes you'd be ranting yeah, and raving care. about it for days yes you would you no, would I wouldn't. absolutely care. yes you no, would. I wouldn't see this is you guys you care this much about your favorite franchise i don't 
If the Mad Max Netflix show came out and the opening intro was Mad Max it going, oh, God, I really just need to like, oh, I need to take a shit. I'm going to take a poop on camera, everyone. And he looked in like Justin Roiland humor. You'd be ranting about it for weeks. I would expect nothing else from Netflix. What the fuck is your expectation? I wouldn't go in thinking this is going to be the best day of my life. So are you just not excited for things? <laughs> I don't is that what you got away me. from that? Oh, my God. You guys... Just sometimes you have to understand that people don't just lose their minds or get super butthurt if their favorite franchise kind of has, uh, has a bad adaptation. It's fine. Well, that's called being an adult, and I refuse that, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Just I'm not going to lose my mind if it sucks. Anyway, point is. is it, wait, 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 wait. Is it like the Halo oh thing? God. Like Halo came out and I didn't care that it was bad? I guess, yeah. Okay. Did you rant and rave for days and days about how bad it was? It's fine. No, I joked about it because it was funny to joke about it being I mean, bad, we watched but... it. It was fun. Yeah. It, was still, it was still fun to watch with a friend. That's yeah. all it is. Okay. You have uh, the, the wildest taste in things, like the objectively <laughs> worst shows. You're like, yeah, you know what, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't have high expectations. I go in expecting this is yeah, going to be Yeah, but then for dumb. like actually good movies and stuff, you're like, well, it was actually kind of shit. It was like actually super boring. I initially went to John Wick, but then I remembered we all went down this entire train of like, yeah, it's just kind of not as good as the others. So it wasn't just Kaya. That was the one that immediately but popped into my good. head. Yeah, but it wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't like a terrible movie. I wouldn't compare John Wick 4 to like the Cowboy Bill. Was it Joker? Is that the other one I was thinking of where you went on and on about how Joker's like, like Joker. actually shit? No, I like Joker. Are you talking about the last one that was basically a drama? I thought it was yeah. a decent movie. Oh, okay. Then I must be misremembering. We had this whole debate about some movie not too long ago that we all really liked, except you. And it's like a beloved movie as well. Mm. I can't remember what it was, though. I thought oh, that's it was fine. Joker. That's how. Well, wait, what about works, Avatar? But... You, you, you hated Avatar? Oh, Avatar. That's what it was. Because you and I liked Avatar, and Kai's like, yeah, shit is fucking terrible. <laughs> it's just so boring. Yeah. Oh, you mean the blue people Avatar? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was fucking boring. It had no story. It's a tech demo. Yeah, but why'd you go and, and you couldn't even much? defend it? <laughs> yeah i mean that's fair i was still bored i, I you know it, the one piece show isn't a tech demo at least that is it has some semblance of a story it is fun to watch i think they picked the actor as well whoever plays luffy he's fun he seems yeah, to bring luffy the le right levity um zoro is a little too grumpy edgy, yeah. because it, not even edgy just grumpy or quiet. He's too mysterious, I guess, the actor. Because in the show, That's... he at least has his little childish emotional outbursts where he starts yelling at Luffy or whatever. Um, what's her face? Nami's whatever, I guess. And I don't care about <laughs> Usopp at all. <laughs> like one bit. Wait, so you, you like this show? You just, <laughs> you just shit on like half the characters. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch One Piece when I was younger because it's been going for what, like 20 years now. So More I do remember that. some of the stuff. I think they're at episode 2 billion at this point. <laughs> I haven't been able to keep up, obviously, but I do kind of remember some of it. Anyway, point is, I think the life action is fun. And I hope it is. A I'm enjoying it. Season. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Holy uh, shit. There's 1,075 episodes of One Piece. Wait, how much? One thousand. Yeah, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. One thousand seventy-five. It has been running since nineteen ninety-nine. Where are you up to, Charlie? Three eighty-five. Oh, you got. Don't worry. You only have to do what you just watched two more times, and then you're close to the end. Yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! How long did that take you? Uh, two years. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's such a commitment. Yeah, it, the it adaptation is. skips some stuff, so I think the adaptation, if it does continue, I, for some reason they decided to skip a lot of um, episodes. I guess not even filler, but they might catch up faster. I suppose the, it absolutely will. Where it is in the show is like episode fuck, like ninety or a hundred something. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like posts. Is is. Does this count as a spoiler? It's pretty old, right? The anime where they yeah. defeat Arlong. That's pretty much where the first season ends for uh, One Piece. And then they tease Smoker. Was that his name? Yep, Smoker. Yeah, Cigarette Man or Cigar Man, I guess. It was a cool character. I vaguely remember him too. So, He's a very yeah, cool character. I like it. Mm -hmm. 
Didn't they? Did they? Uh, Netflix come out and say that they've like confirmed that they'll be going for s- another six seasons. No, no. this season two. <laughs> oh, I, I bet damn. they're gonna cancel it after season two, like they do yeah. everything. It's fucking yeah. That's Netflix. why it's so hard to get invested in like Netflix shows or anything if it's not Stranger Things or what's that? What's that weird like sex positive TV show on it? Like Big Mouth. Sex edu- no, oh yeah, that. Oh, but also, yeah, I think it's like education. sex education. Yeah, that one. Like, if it's not those three, they get cancelled immediately. And so, what's the point of getting invested in like anything new that they create? Yeah, nothing. Done. You get no argument from me. Mm-hmm. They teased the Big Mouth season seven two this past week, which is Can't wait. what everyone was waiting for. This is Woo-hoo! awesome. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> You're gonna get your bros around, Andrew, and have a nice big mouth. Yeah, watch party. we all watch it together. We get naked too to get in character. <laughs> yeah, they announced that. The, the, <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. The new, uh, the new season includes Megan the Stallion. Megan the Stallion, yeah. Uh, very cool which is what everyone was waiting for I guess but then again I don't know the fucking big mouth audience maybe they actually do go wild for that I'm just scrolling through One Piece episodes Jesus Christ it never ends it's an extremely impressive depth like that yeah, w- that whole crazy. universe I was texting Jackson about it yesterday because I'm finally at the point where all of these different pieces from the beginning are starting to really come into play in a bigger way it's unbelievable how deep that universe is can you tell me this? Does hmm. Usopp ever become useful to the crew? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He does? That he is does. surprising. What episode? Because in my entire childhood, <laughs> I hated him because he was worthless. Yeah. He was just on the ship doing nothing except getting his ass kicked and cry. Uh, I think Skypea, he starts becoming pretty useful overall. So uh, when is that? Like 300 episodes in? It's It's like... It's like 280. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty deep. <laughs> okay, season five of the live action adaptation, he'll be worth something, I guess. Jesus Christ, it just keeps going. <laughs> I can't stop. I know. Does he never find the gold? The, no, they Kepa still know. Like, even in the, the manga, which is a lot further than the anime, they still don't even know really what the One Piece is. <laughs> it's been 18 years. Luffy is like 36 now. How does he still not have it? Wait, does he? Do, is he still a kid, or is he aged up in the? No, in in, in the in the world, it's only been a, like a handful of months, really. Or, or sorry, like <laughs> the Holy first shit. couple before time skip, it's only been a few months. After time skip, two years goes by, and then after that, it's only again like a matter of months. So this this guy goes on a grand, exciting adventure eight times a day. Yeah. Well, no, it takes travel time. So like. The arc I was in is called Thriller Bark, and basically they get there, and then they spend what's basically just 24 hours there, but it goes on for like 40 episodes. Jesus Christ. So like an entire arc will take place over one day, but go for 40, 50 episodes. (laughs) So ridiculous. This is nutty. It's incredible, honestly. So they really haven't touched on the the, the One Piece at all in... 400 episodes there's theories and shit and there's like references to it and everything but still no confirmation no on what it reason. actually is is do it going to be the friends we made along the way do you think that's no, where it's, it's going not, it's not going to be a cop out like that i don't think what i do think it is going to be like no real treasure per se it's it's going to be a lot like bigger like a than that power or something No, it'll be some kind of like history of type thing, because one of the big overarching plots here is there's something called the Void Era that all of history was erased for some reason, and it's trying to put the pieces together on what it was. Mm. It's very, very, very interesting. That'd be so fucking depressing if you went on this giant fucking pirate adventure for like 800 episodes or whatever, like, I don't know, 20 years of your life. And then at the end, it turns out that the fucking reward, the tri- the, the pirate treasure was a fucking history book that you'd find in a high school. I'd be beyond that disappointed. Would that would suck. You would also expect that in like over in over a thousand episodes at some point, they would do have an arc where Luffy gets his treasure and then he loses it or something and has to win it back instead of just, he never gets there ever. <laughs> Always chasing the dragon. They lost an F 
35. Have you guys seen this? Yeah, no, the army did. <laughs> How do you lose that? So the story allegedly is that a F-35 malfunctioned the fighter jets. Pilot ejects himself. The lo- locating beacon on the thing malfunctions, I guess, and now the army doesn't know where it went. <laughs> They claim the <laughs> autopilot kept flying it, and now it's disappeared. And now they're asking the public for help to I'll, find it. I'll make sure to keep my, my nose to the ground, yeah. see if I find it anywhere. That's fucking awesome. It's just fucking flying in a straight line, probably. Right? This is like that scene from Stealth when it gets sentience, and he's like, I've downloaded every song in the universe. <laughs> Oh man, that's so fucking stupid. How do they not have like a, the ability to like manually, I don't know, do something with the plane if it's not in control, or some way to bring it down if it's if it's not in control? Well, it's a stealth jet, right? So it's not supposed so to, it's be doing its able job to be able to be detected. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is like if you lost stealth keys in your home and you have no idea where your fucking car keys <laughs> was, but. I just, like, wouldn't you see a plume of smoke somewhere after it crashed? It has to run out of gas eventually, right? Yeah, but maybe it lands itself, too, somewhere, so now it's just vacationing. And it takes off again while it refuels. <laughs> it refuels itself and takes off again. What do you think it wants? What's its goal? <laughs> yeah, whatever its demands. What quest is it on right now? <laughs> its demands. <laughs> yeah, what if ChatGPT already hijacked it? It's going to, like, fucking attack China or something. Just <laughs> yeah. Just, oh, that would be awesome. It beelines right to Russia and crashes. <laughs> Could we diffuse responsibility? No, the jet did it. We didn't attack you. It was the jet. It was all sentient. What if it's a transformer? How do oh. We... Yeah. And apparently the these alien. things cost $80 million, by the way, a pop. Yeah. So they just Wait, only 80 <laughs> But that's a lot of money. What do you mean only? It's a lot of money, but these are like hyper advanced military hardware. I would have thought way more than I would have expected like in the billions too, to be honest with you. No, but it's still extremely expensive. That's like a one of the most expensive Hollywood mansions flying away that like Notch lives in and just goes missing for some fucking reason. But Elon Musk <laughs> could like afford an entire country's like army of them, basically. And that's a if lot. I was a billionaire, I would. I would buy a bunch of these and let them loose on the goddamn skies. And I'd be like, whoops, I lost hundred of them. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, start. Well, what do you, what do you do in that situation? <laughs> you, just start, you start the keys, you, like you ignite the engine, you start the keys in the fucking jet, and then you put a brick on the pedal or whatever, and it just takes off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jam the beacons, just completely deny all. Uh, yeah, it's lost, man. It must have been stolen. I don't know. A park one in San Francisco, which is what happens. Part of living in a big city, your stuff gets stolen. <laughs> never seen it. Yeah, your Harrier jet just flies away. It's part of living in California. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hole again in the fucking jumpsuit. But yeah, as of four minutes ago, it has not been seen. That's funny. Well, speaking on Elon Musk buying jets and all of that stuff uh the gaps between the top richest people in the world have gotten very interesting lately um elon is rocketed ahead of everyone else at 264 billion whereas bezos used to be his uh you know closest competitor he's now a hundred billion dollars net worth less than elon musk and i don't know how that cottage cheese man does it because yeah, everyone what, hates he, him. But also, are his businesses that successful? Tesla kills it, I think, yeah. Tesla is, yeah. Really? Wow. It has to, yeah. I think that's probably where most of it comes from. I could imagine that, I guess. But yeah, he's at $264 billion And like, god damn, that's insane. I mean, it makes sense to me. People aren't going to stop like investing in his companies just because people are melting down on Twitter. I suppose, These yeah. Are two different things. Twitter told me that these businesses weren't successful. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter says that about everyone. They, whenever yeah. there's like someone I who's worth a trillion bucks, they go, that was luck. The irony is, Jackson, you should never get your sources from Twitter because they're also owned by Elon Musk anyway. 
But why would he be insulting himself? <laughs> he's, right. he's like algorithmically promoting people saying that his businesses suck. True. Very true. But um, another development uh, that I thought was pretty interesting is there's someone in second place now. Bezos is now third. And it's uh, Bernard Arnault, who owns oh. Louis Vuitton and a bunch of other fashion shit. Oh, yeah. It's like the entire brand, right? The entire fashion yeah. industry, mm-hmm. basically. But, but that, I, that just blows my mind because they are currently almost at $200 billion for doing fashion. Whereas Jeff Bezos owns Amazon, which does everything. And he's $40 billion short of that guy. Yeah, how the fuck is fashion at the... I mean, it is like high-end fashion. I don't think it's just fashion, right? I think this company, LVM yeah, because or whatever it's called. I don't know if you've left your house recently, but every woman who's ever been born now has a Louis Vuitton bag, real or not. It is one of the most famous companies to ever exist. Yeah, but even, even, even then, I just don't see it being as big as like Amazon. Same. Literally supplies. I think there's some foul play there. Don't they sell Louis Vuitton (laughs) on Amazon? Can't you get it there? Probably. Probably. Yeah, so it's LVMH, right? That's fake ones. That's the company that he owns, and it's not yeah. just Louis Vuitton. It is like a luxury goods like conglomerate. So they it do also like owns Sephora, yeah. Sephora, Dior, Moet, and Sh- Chandon. So that champagne. Okay, so he just owns fashion, right? He no, it's not even fashion. It's just like high life living, basically, like Bulgari, uh, like high H- Hennessy. Hennessy. Oh, he owns Hennessy too. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's a recent development. In uh, last year, he had 158 billion, which is up there, but you know, not where Bezos and Musk. But it's kind of cringe, yeah. In the la- yeah, in the last year, he made 60 billion, topping out at 211 billion, and now he's down to 195. But still, he hit 211 just on fashion brands. To be fair, isn't Bezos kind of taking it easy now? I don't think he's as actively involved in trying to. Be rich anymore potentially is he i mean i doubt he cares like he's still got hundreds of billions of dollars who cares at that point well, yeah, but yeah. if you're not first a pissing last. contest with each other to be the richest man in the world for sure you think they you think they made up at all and just fucking like burn money in <laughs> in like private meetings Cackle about like the rest of us yeah yeah <laughs> and just hang out <laughs> you think you think for they sure. like uh like make I don't know, like, uh, it's your turn in front, um, Renard, or whatever his name is, Bernard. They're polite and cordial. Ronald. You can, you can take, uh, you can take the lead for a year and then we'll give it back to Jeff and he can have his turn. Like, they're they're (laughs) friends like that. How nice. Yeah, it's not, it's not too surprising, actually, now that I'm looking at this list of what this guy actually owns. It is literally every high-end fashion label, as well as, like, high-end champagne and wine companies and he owns fucking rihanna he owns fenty beauty <laughs> which is rihanna's company Ooh, i thought you meant he owned rihanna the person and it will be kind of if he owns the company that is her business now true true wow yeah we so. truly are that vapid and shallow take that society i mean that's not surprising no not at all I just think the the amount that it's generated is a bit surprising, but maybe not. Yeah, no, it is. It is. All right. What do you think? Do you think that there will be a new industry or a new person that takes over Top Spot anytime soon? Uh, yeah, the number one podcaster eventually. Mm. We're almost there. What's what is the highest like entertainment CEO? Probably. Marvel. Probably like Steven Spielberg or someone who just owns a bunch of production companies and shit. Do they own, do they have billions or is it just millions? Uh, Steven, I believe, has like a couple billion. Uh, no Steven shot. has four no and a half billion dollars. Really? What? Yes. Because he Holy owns shit. a bunch of production companies like fucking Touchstone. and Not Touchstone. He owns something that's huge. That is actually wild. I'm actually shocked. <laughs> Billions. He owns. Hang on, we're getting there. He is the owner of. Why can't I find it? Uh. Oh uh, God. Here's a question for you, Charlie. While he's finding that, DreamWorks. Um, 
Oh, DreamWorks. Wait, He's he one of the DreamWorks? co-founders and uh, like big money in DreamWorks, as well as Amblin Entertainment, which I yeah, don't know Amblin what they spun off into. Yeah, that's his. That's his personal one production yeah. house. Um, Charlie, who do you think is the richest, like grassroots YouTuber, like the the one highest on this list? Um, Mr. Beast. No, it's probably not going to be Mr. Beast because he spends so much. But he makes enough to spend that much. Yeah, like but there's definitely YouTubers that hoard their wealth a lot more than he does, so it's probably not going to be him. Plus, um, I, I don't mean like obviously like the uh, Tonight Show hosts or whatever that are also on YouTube or oh. like those big things or c- conglomerations. I mean the the specific personality. Uh, Do you have an answer? YouTube. Is that what you're asking? No, I'm just curious what you think. Oh, oh shit. I don't know. Those Spider-Man Elsa videos, probably. It'd probably be like Coco Melon or something. It'd have to be. The hell is a Coco Melon? I don't know what that is either. But are they grassroots? Baby Shark and everything. Isn't that a whole production company? Isn't that not one person? Yeah. Well, so is Mr. Beast. Oh, nursery rhymes. It's probably some children's YouTuber, yeah. Yeah. Jesus, 165 million subscribers. Oh, you know, oh, Ryan's Toy Reviews. It, yeah, Ryan's Toys Reviews. I was just about to say that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I just Definitely. thought of that once Once we brought up Nursery Rhymes. 100%, it's probably Ryan's Toy Reviews. Yeah. Which is fucking crazy. He's a kid. <laughs> the richest YouTuber. Is so like I'm going to... This, this is a fun topic. I want you guys to tell me, what do you think are in the top 10 most streamed movies ever? On YouTube or in, on in general across all streaming platforms. Oh, I bet it's, it's probably Paw kids' Patrol movies or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, Paw Patrol. Gotta be. Gotta no, just be. Yeah, get, it has to be something child related, right? Okay, how about this? What do you think is the most streamed movie on every platform ever? Uh, hmm. Shrek. I don't know. <laughs> I guess not. Sure okay. I, I can tell you're trying to lead us to the. the it has to be a children's thing, right? Perhaps, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, is it fro? Okay. Chad is saying Frozen. No, it's not. It can't be. It no, because that would only be on Disney Plus. <laughs> it has to be. A, it has to be a kids' movie that's on every platform because they don't care. What if it's like? What if he's just trying to mislead us and it's actually like Citizen Kane? Uh, I'm gonna say the, the Mummy details. Two. Mm, Apocalypse Now. That'd be that. What a great world that'd be if that was the yeah. case. Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> so one of you really fumbled there. You said it has to be on every platform. You're wrong. Of the oh. top streaming movies in the world, I think it was like 60% are just Disney Plus ones because it's all kids show or all kids and movies. Me. I would mm-hmm. yeah, I watch sense. It's Always Sunny there. Which kids probably don't watch. Let me go on Disney Plus. So what's the answer? No, 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 no. Encanto. No, no, or no, actually what? Encanto Encanto's too. Uh fuck, what was number 1? Frozen. <laughs> no, it's not Frozen. Is it? I don't think it's Frozen. Uh, Frozen was in the top 10, but I don't think it was number one. Okay. Elemental? <laughs> no, oh, Elemental's so not even there yet. Toy Store? No, too old. If the last is accurate, it's, is it Coco? Coco. Yeah, it's Coco, oh, I think. Is it the... What? Huh. Huh. Which one did you pull up? Because the top 10 should also I include some wacky ones chat. like... What, what, what was it? Just look in chat. Torment posted it. It's... Coco is number one, then it's Zootopia. Wait, that's yes. the other way the around. Gray Man. That's the other way around, isn't it? And that's oh, the wait. right one. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm retarded. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at the right one, uh, but Encanto. the wrong way. <laughs> and yeah. then turning Encanto. red. No, not turning red. Sing 2, Moana, The Adam Project, Hocus Pocus 2, Don't Look Up, Frozen, Luca, The Gray Man, Zootopia, Coco. Oh. I have heard of The like, Gray Man. None of the ones in the middle there. Yeah, what? <laughs> Those ones. The Gray that's Man. a Netflix one. Yeah, wow. I've never What's heard the of Adam that. Project? Also, not heard of. Don't look up. Was like, wasn't that peak COVID? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think a lot of these were like peak COVID. Like in Kanto, Zootopia I think came was out before. COVID. Coco was before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I think I Moana think in Kanto was, was before. Frozen. Turning red and in Kanto, I think might yeah. have been COVID. Those were so the, sure. the trend in. When you really think about it, it makes sense. Is anything children's related is getting watched a million times a day because kids just like noise. So yeah. 
an adult will watch something one, maybe two times, three times, or if you're Jackson, eight times in theaters for Jurassic World. <laughs> but like for kids, <laughs> they'll have this shit on loop like 24 seven. So they'll have yeah. Encanto on. It'll play six or seven times per day per household. So yeah, you just will sense. you will I, never beat kids content. It's it's also because it's still stimulating to them. If I sit yeah. down and watch a movie, I go, okay, I got the plot, I got the I got characters, the I got the visuals, yeah. I'm done. Whereas a kid on their seventh watch through is going to go, oh, wow, look at that thing I didn't see. Oh, because it's just so much to take in. I don't in. know if it's stimulating or numbing, because a lot of parents <laughs> just put their kids in front of these things as babysitters, right? Yeah, yeah, well, we did know. you grow up in front of a television? Uh, I mean, we did have TV, yeah. I don't think any of them watch TV now. They have iPads, but... I remember as a kid, I'd watch cartoons and I'd watch the same fucking episode like nine or ten times. And yeah, on the exactly. This time, isn't I'd a new phenomenon. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's, yeah. it's not new. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, wait, you mean like it's across not new, time? new, but it is worse now, obviously. Yeah, there's a reason that so many kids on the internet, one of their crossroads is they can quote Spongebob. It's because yeah. growing up, you just watch the same fucking Spongebob reruns as everyone else yeah, over and over and over again. You, you Back then, you didn't, you, weren't, you didn't get to choose what you watched, really. So it was, it was even worse. Cable. That's not true. So, you got DVDs, VHS tapes. You could choose what you want. True, true. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the that was it was actually worse back then because now you have all these choices. You have all these things to pick from. But back then, if your parents said, "Hey, I bought you Zootopia on DVD," that's all you had until they bought you a new DVD. Well, no, you had cable. Well, I I, I don't think I rewatched like DVDs that much when I was a kid, especially with cable. Oh, like, I, I did. Could just turn on Nickelodeon Same. or whatever. I, I had VHS tapes. I kept rewatching. I can't tell you the number of times I watched the original Matrix on DVD. It's it's up there. I was obsessed with it as a yeah. kid. And when I was a kid, I used to watch Cats versus Dogs or whatever that movie. Oh yes, just, oh, that's a fun other. franchise. That is a fun Fuck franchise. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. man, is it a franchise? Isn't that like the only yeah. movie they ever made? No, no there, there was a more. bunch. Yeah, I think there was a second one. I'm not sure. I only I think had it the released, first one, and I kept rewatching it. I, I really had that late. and Mary Poppins. <laughs> Wow, I can't even imagine you watching Mary Poppins. <laughs> it was one of my favorite movies. Still to this day, I think the original is really, really good. It's a fun movie. It's a very great and decent children's movie. I, I loved Tom and Jerry. Is that your go-to like child movie? Like when you were a little kid, you were like, oh, I love Mary Poppins. It's the best thing ever. Yeah, probably. I mean, like I said, Aww. that's Cats vs. Dogs and the classic Tom and Jerry's. I used to watch that stuff a lot when I was... One of mine as a kid was the Tom and Jerry movie where they talk. And that movie is absolute trash. It fucking sucks from start (laughs) to finish. It's really bad. Yeah, I doubt any of this stuff would hold up today except maybe Mary (laughs) Poppins, but I don't know. (laughs) But yeah, the the children's movie thing online, it doesn't surprise me at all. At all. I mean, again, every every parent now has an iPad a dedicated babysitter iPad to put their kids in front of and make them watch this stuff. So they shut up for like 30 seconds. We've talked like ad nauseum about it. It's, I know. It's the, been the case for like... We should move to being a children's podcast. We'll make so much goddamn money. We'll make baby noises. Go on. Do it. Maybe let me a little podcast. Click the ad. Baby shark. Mm. <laughs> Baby we need shark, to dress up as shark, superheroes shark. and shit as well. Yeah, we have to make those like super hero versus Squid Game videos that you see on YouTube. Oh, I'll be get your daddy's credit card, man, and that's yeah. my superpower. <laughs> I convince you to yeah. get your daddy's credit card. <laughs> what I think is craziest about that list that you posted—the most streamed movies in 2022. By the way, that's just 2022 only. Um, is how close one and nine are, and then how monumentally different ten and nine, like number one spot is compared to the rest. It's like double, mm, also I double the amount the of minutes. Did, yeah, yeah, chat did. I it's know. double the minutes viewed over second place. Like Turning Red is eleven point four billion minutes viewed, and then Encanto is twenty seven point four. Yeah, what that's the fuck just, did Encanto do? Did they fudge exist. the numbers? How come it's like um. Yeah, but what, how was it different than Turning Red or Sing 2 or Moana? I, I, I like it. I, I watched you. it. I, I watched it once so that my minutes counted. Is it good? I watched it this year. I liked it, but I don't know. It's a pretty typical 
Disney movie. What's the so what's the gimmick? Because like it looks really generic, whereas most of them have gimmicks. Uh, the, the gimmick was just the music, really. It just had pretty uh, nice music, pretty good music. So there's there's nothing like with Zootopia. You get like animal people with fucking. Uh, what's the the family in Encanto all have like their own specific magic powers, basically. Okay, so, so they're magic. I can't believe Don't okay, Look Up yeah. is on this list. I just realized. What a boring ass movie to put on there. I thought it was fine. I didn't hate it. Didn't love it. Well, kids love it, apparently. It's the only reason it's up there. <laughs> yeah, kids love these <laughs> movies. They love the gray man. <laughs> Can't get enough. <laughs> Wait, there's no... You know what I'm realizing out of nowhere? Uh, there's no, no mm. superhero movies on that list. Thank God. Oh, yeah, good point. That's, huh. com- that's super surprising. They're all on Disney+. Yeah, Plus. you're right. There's not a single Marvel thing in here. And they really or, are falling off. Or Star Wars. That's not surprising. That is <laughs> very Wars. not surprising at all. <laughs> you know, I just realized that Hocus Pocus 2 is the sequel to a movie that was like 20 years old. Yeah, I loved Hocus Pocus. One. Yeah, I, I thought it was maybe like a reboot or something, but no, it stars the original actresses and it's it's the same characters. That's I might watch that. I loved that movie as a kid. Yeah, I don't think the second was very good, apparently. I didn't watch it It doesn't either. matter, Jackson. Fucking 5.7 billion streams don't lie, okay? Yeah, that's a lot of minutes. Yeah. Minutes viewed. How many? Think about this. More more people have watched Hocus Pocus two than have listened to the entirety of our show. That's fine. Uh, (laughs) Wait, is that how many minutes of the show do you think have been listened to? Because Andrew, that list is not five point seven billion hits. That's five point seven billion minutes viewed. So it's five point seven billion minutes. It's a good question. (sighs) Wait, what were you asking? I said, uh, like, how many minutes viewed of the podcast do you think there's been? Oh, I don't know. Would we be? I mean, don't we have like? Can't Charlie look up one episode and then just we multiply that by three hundred and sixty or whatever we're at now? Yeah, but then we got to include bonus episodes as well, and the pre-post shows as well. Can't forget that, which everyone uh, watched. According to my rough math, I might (laughs) have fucked this up, but that's ninety-five million hours. So do you think in our show's history, people have listened to a total of 95 million episodes of this oh, show? Much, yeah, well, I, I just ran the numbers on the Encanto, which 27 billion minutes is apparently 456 million hours, which is 19 million days. That's a lot of lifespans. Yeah, I don't. I don't think our show has been listened to that much. Well, I, or- I bet it has. How about that? Okay. Nice. On audio platforms, we have 50 million total uh, views. So... How how long do you have to listen for it to count as one view? At least 60 seconds, so that's a minute. (laughs) (laughs) We have at least 50 million So what you're saying is we have less than half of the number of people who watched anything on this list really no we're not even close the <laughs> earliest one there is no. i mean the lowest one there is 4.3 billion minutes we've only got 50 million minute, minutes yeah let's minimum. turn the next episode into a children's play and make it 12 hours long you're a genius no just one hour why would we make it 12 hours we make it one hour long and they just loop it and watch it every day no 10 times. we kaya we double down and get exponential growth we make it one hour long we loop it for 12 hours then they loop it for 12 hours that's 144 hours in one sitting Ooh. yeah yeah think of the growth do your eyes like gloss over and your brain just like, like emits a weird whining, like whining noise whenever like numbers and math are brought up. Because <laughs> I find it so hard to concentrate. <laughs> that's that sounds about right. It's like e in my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant that when I speak. I used to be like that in school. Yeah, it is so hard to concentrate on numbers. It's Especially like dyslexia but numbers. Class. Ugh, I hate it. I know I hate numbers too. Well, math. what this chart should have done is it has it in billions of minutes. It should have converted it to seconds so we could get trillions of seconds. Even uh, more impressive. 
Jackson, all I know is four is smaller than 27. That's how I know Coco isn't as popular as Encanto. Yeah, That's exactly. My, the extent of my math. <laughs> <laughs> That's the limits I've hit. <laughs> Let's wrap up this episode with the nice little things we like aspect. Is there anything in the world that Aww. you guys are liking at the moment? Well, you go first, Jackson, but I have mine ready to fucking yeah, go. Let's go in jack order. No, no, no. I need. I, I just ad libbed that. I need to think. Okay, go I'll go first. first. I talked about it before we started recording. F zero ninety nine is really fucking good. I can't recommend it enough. It's yeah, I'm it's a great rip roar in time. I wish it was on other things other than the Switch though, because now I have to drag my Switch out of its fucking <laughs> dusty closet that it's hidden in. <laughs> it's real good. It, it does it's good. just fun. It's just simple. It's fun. Games last like five minutes, not even. I love it. I think it's great. All right, I I, I have one. Uh, Yesterday, I had my parents over, and I... You love your parents? That's weird. Yeah, that's fucking lame. I wish lame. I could bring that up. Boo. I don't want them thinking that. I made them Japanese yakiniku, which is like Japanese barbecue, basically. So I bought like a little Japanese grill. What a weeb. Oh, God. <laughs> it's so good. And you, you <laughs> said, konnichiwa, sushi desu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I made that. Uh, some anime. <laughs> yeah, put on Adam. You bought a thing. nine hour plane ticket to Japan. Felt very ganky. <clears throat> I put some Wagyu steak on there and it was so fucking delicious. So that's what I enjoyed this week. And my parents enjoyed it. And I fucking burnt the shit out of myself. I put way too much charcoal in there and it fucking exploded at me and burnt my like face. So let me get this straight. You didn't enjoy your parents, but you enjoyed steak and burning yourself. Well, I didn't like the burning aspect, but I liked the steak, yeah. Okay. Steak is always good. Try some smoked salts, Jackson. Yeah, well, uh, I don't like salt that much, Kaya. <laughs> Not a salt fiend like No, you don't have to put, I assume you do salt your steak a little bit. So I'm just saying, just a try a slight bit of flavor. Versions. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I mean. I don't think, you, are you meant to do anything with Wagyu steak? I think you're just meant to like kind of enjoy the buttery flavor that it presents. You can naturally. do whatever the fuck you want with it. All right. Yeah, there Jackson, are no rules so here. All right, Kaya, what did you enjoy this week? What? It's Andrew's turn. F099. Oh, he's, he's ready to go. We're going Jack. I already, oh, I already said F099. Okay. Hmm. Lies of P for me. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Hasn't that game uh -oh. only been out for like an hour? Well, no, it's Lies been out for a couple P. days. I've only played it once, though, but I really enjoyed uh -oh. it. It's not like the best Souls-like or anything, but it's still very fun. It's nice to see other studios doing Souls games pretty well. What is I'm, the best Souls-like? That's not FromSoft? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Neo. Neo? Like, uh -huh. So it doesn't beat that yet? No, it hasn't beaten Neo yet. I'm also not super far, so maybe it just keeps getting better. So there's still a chance. I'm mm -hmm. glad that that game's actually solid, by the way. I don't know if you remember, but when it was first revealed, everyone thought it was going to be a scam game or an acid flip or something. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of hype around it, but there was always that skepticism, like, it's probably it's not going to be studio, good. Because right? they're an unknown studio, right? No, 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 no. They're not no. unknown. Oh. It's just they're not a huge studio. Yeah. So people were like, oh, they're just cashing in and yeah. trying to make, but apparently it's fine. Came out fine. Does look good. I, I do want to try it. All right. Andrew, uh, Kaya, mm. it's your turn. Better be something uh, good. Curveball. Okay. So, for the first, very rarely does this happen, <laughs> but I actually saw recently a horror movie that didn't suck. You watched in the wait, movie theaters. Did, did you watch Talk to Me? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Fuck yeah. I was shocked. I was shocked because. So I just wanted to take my little sister-in-law and my wife to the movies and I figured, okay, whatever. I don't want to see any of these movies. Why not a horror movie? It was surprisingly good. The visuals were okay. The story was okay. Do you want me to surprise you even further? What? It was made by two YouTubers. That doesn't surprise me, actually. I mean, it, oh. it <laughs> felt like it wasn't made by a disconnected, stupid studio. It's, yeah, that makes sense, honestly. Oh, it okay. felt like it was made by people who, I don't know, they like somebody who has actually talked to a young person in the last 10 years or so, you know? Mm -hmm. Because they had those segments of like young people just at a party having fun and it actually felt realistic. 
the way they behave and talk and such. But yeah, it's a decent horror movie. Um, the, my fa- the two women started kind of hating it and crying, but I liked it. And in the middle somewhere, I also burst out laughing because there is a scene where one of the characters starts sucking on someone's toes. <laughs> yeah. and I don't know why it caught me off guard. I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that scene was so wacky. Oh, it's by the it it's was. by the dudes that did the Babadook. Interesting. What what what? No, it's not. It's by Raka Raka from YouTube. We, who made Babadook, yeah. What? No, they didn't make Babadook. Well it says they did. Danny Filippo and uh, and his brother. Maybe, Michael maybe they Filippo? starred maybe they starred in it they or something, or maybe did they the wrote it. Camera and electrical work for the Babadook. Yeah, they didn't make it. Yeah, it's close enough. Oh. <laughs> they, don't they, were, okay. <laughs> they were involved. You're, you're right. They, they made the Babadook. <laughs> <laughs> All credit goes but to yeah, that. Was a, that was a fun movie. It's out on home release now, I think, if anybody wants to stream it at home. The only other thing they really made like that is they made a mini series called Racka Racka. Oh my God. <laughs> that's that's Which, what I'm talking about. That's their YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're a huge they're a huge channel. No, I know that's the joke. Oh, okay. Jesus yeah. Christ, I can never tell anymore. <laughs> well, it, it, the joke is that IMDb <laughs> always lists this stuff as like actual shows and stuff. Like they're credited as directors of that show. Yeah, that makes it, sense. Like it's it's just their fucking thing. Well, they do. If I don't know if you, you've probably seen their stuff without realizing it's them. The the content they make is very high production. They very much are directors of Raka Raka, where it's like these are short films in essence. Oh yeah, did they have a billion dollar net worth? Not yet. Probably losers. Did you know that their Talk to Me movie is the highest grossing A twenty four film? <gasps> Bitch, really? All time? Yeah, I believe more so. more than the whale. Twenty four is but. I'll double this check. Was so much better than the whale. Are you for real? Oh wait, oh, I yeah. forgot. I, th- I forgot. A twenty four is everything, everywhere, all at once. Maybe it's their highest grossing horror movie. That would sound more accurate because that movie and the whale made like billions and bajillions yeah. of dollars. Oh, there's also Midsummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah it, they, they have, it's their highest forty eight. Midsummer only made forty eight million. There, there's also the really big A twenty four movie, Heredity, also known as Hereditary. <laughs> Yeah, that made 82, so that's still more. And that is also a horror movie, so you're wrong. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm looking at it right here. Talk to Me becomes A24's top grossing horror movie at the box office. There's a bunch of headlines about that. But Hereditary made twice as much movie as it has. <laughs> twice as much movie? This did really well. This, <laughs> money, so not the budget movie. was <laughs> $4.5 and it's made almost 70 So that's like 15 times? 15x? Oh, God. There's math again. Sorry, Jackson. <laughs> My brain is going e again. <laughs> Stop with the numbers. A equals C squared. Um, but yeah, go go watch that movie. It's actually I've never thought that I would recommend a horror movie on the show. But What's the concept? Decent. Uh, the concept is that it's a bunch of young kids, teenagers, and they basically turn summoning ghosts into a party game. Which sounds silly, but it kind of works. Mm-hmm. So they literally, it's like a Ouija board at a party, but it's actually real. And then it kind of gets out of hand. And it's fun. Is it just one ghost? Is it one demonic presence? Or is it a multi, like, is it a cast of ghosts? No, it's Several. like a, it's, it's a whole, it's like getting friends together to do the Ouija board, <laughs> except you actually get possessed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you guys remember, uh, you guys probably remember this, this, the movie uh, 13 Ghosts, I'm pretty sure it was called. Yeah. No, I don't the, remember the, that. I also remember the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. That's not the one I'm talking about. 13 Ghosts. But it, it was like the only movie I think I've seen, horror movie, where there's like a, an actual cast of monsters and, and ghouls and stuff. And I don't know why more horror movies don't do that with like more ghosts. Put more ghosts in your movies. More spirits. Not just the same one that's hunting you down. I want 13 of them, or 14 even. Are you sure? I mean, um, Hellraiser does that. There's a whole cast of like wacky characters that haunt you. Yeah, it's like the only other one. I guess that's also a good horror movie I would recommend is the first Hellraiser, the original one from the old timey times, and the recent reboots was also decent. All right, that's going to do it for this week. On that note, thank you for joining us for another episode. Um, If you Mm want to... 
watch more of the show, we got a Patreon, patreon.com slash the official podcast. We got bonus episodes as well as extra series that are quite fun. I don't know if we're going to keep the same name. We're going back to the drawing board on the name again for Potophiles. Crime and Punishment. Uh, Crime and Punishment is so fucking stupid. What do you think of that no, name, Charlie? That's good. Oh, that's pretty good. good. <laughs> crime pretty and Punishment? Good. Seriously? Yes, Crime and Punishment is a good name and you're overthinking it. Go with it. I'm not overthinking it. It just sounds so fucking childish. That's the market. <laughs> YouTube is childish. Yeah, but we're not marketing a fucking show about like criminals and pedophiles. For <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, you can listen to Crime and Punishment uh, over at the Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash the official podcast. We'll see you, you next time. Up. I win. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.